Welcome to a lab help video for the Evolution Lab on Mutation and Natural Selection Gizmo. So um, I'm just going to warm you up, make sure you guys know what you're doing. First thing you need to have open is your lab document over here. You can remember there's two versions of it. You can get the Microsoft Word version is what I'm using. Or we also have a link in the Dropbox for a Google Docs version. Just make sure if you're using the Google Docs version, you've selected from the top. Um, file, make a copy so that you can actually write in it. All right, so I've already launched my evolution mutation selection gizmo, and I'm going to start reading the direction. So um, there's a little preface about what we already learned in the microevolution lab with the parrots, that fit individuals have a better chance at reproducing than individuals that are less fit. So here we're going to look at how that idea of natural selection affects a population over time. So in our microevolution gizmo, we only went five generations. This lab, we are actually going to look at 300 generations of insects, okay? So first thing we want to do is look at how that population changes. So we're going to set up our gizmo as the directions say. 100 for red, so I'm just going to come over here to my gizmo, turn it to 100. 255 for green and 50 for blue. So 50 for blue. Don't change anything with mutation right, so keep that the same. And then it says move your cursor over the insects and find the individual... Um, where is mine? I can't see. <laughs> find the individual with the greatest fitness. So by clicking on each of the insects, you'll notice a um, fitness level shows up over here. So I've got 50, 50, 50, 50. Did I set that up right? 155, 255, blue 50. Mm -hmm. Okay, so if you click on them, you'll see the fitness level. Okay, average fitness is 53%. So we can write that down. Average fitness, 53% for generation number one. And then when you click on each of them, it tells you the fitness right there on the screen so you guys can see it. Okay, so then you'd write down over here the fitness of the fittest individual. I saw it was, unless I'm reading that wrong, it's like hard to see. I'm going to make my gizmo a little bit bigger just for a minute so that I can see it better. <laughs> okay, so again, I've clicked on every single one. Average fitness is 53. You'll notice if they look a little different that their fitness is different, but for this situation, it looks like all of mine are saying 50% fitness, so I'm gonna write that right there. And then we are going to fill in each of those individual ones. So the fittest individual, the R phenotype, you're gonna write this number right here for red, so 255. You just have to select the one with the highest fitness. So in this case, all of mine had the same fitness, so I'm just selecting any of them. So none of their numbers are changing, okay? 255, the green is also 255 and the blue is also 255, okay? So that's how we're gonna fill it in for our first one. And then it says to basically just move the simulation speed a quarter of the way, I'm gonna tell you just move it like two clicks. One, two, because if you move it any further, it goes so fast, okay? And you have to be able to stop it at these specific generations. Um, we did make a note here, the generation number does not have to be exact. So if you go a little over 25, like you're at 29 or 30, then you could just you could just write it down. It should be around the same. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and hit play, and then we're going to go and repeat this. And so we have data for all generations up to 300. So I'm going to go ahead and hit play, and you want to look for the generation number stopping at 25. So I'm going to go ahead and do mine. Oop, I have 21. Whew, okay, couldn't stop it at 25, but I did get to 29 on my gizmo. So we can see our average fitness is now 71%. And again, your data might be different than mine, and that's okay. I want you to use your data from your lab. So 71%, and then I'm going to click through and find my fittest individual. So that one has 70, that one's 75, 64, 64, 81. That one's good. Let's see if I get higher than 81. Whoopsies. There we go. So it looks like my fittest individual was 81% fitness. So right here, I'm going to write 81%, and then I'm going to go through the same thing again. So for this one, it was 128, 255, and 170. And 170. Okay. So we keep doing that. Now I'm going to go to 50, and again, I'm going to try my best to pause it at 50. Whoop. Oh, look at that. I got 100. I got exactly at 50. What's up? Okay, so in this situation, my average fitness is 84%. And let's take a look at our fittest. So if we keep looking, that one's 86, 92. Ooh, that one's a good one. 
See if I have anything better. 86, 86, 86, 86, 86. And the easiest way to tell you guys is they should be a little different in color. So this one's there. 92% fitness. That one's the best. So I'm going to write that one down. My highest fitness was 92%. And then I'll just go through my colors again. So 128 now. Same thing for red. 285 for green. And it looks like my blue has changed to 85. Okay. Let's continue and go to generation number 100. So now I can go a little bit longer and let's see what happens for generation 100. So I'm gonna click over to my data table so we can still see it. All right, let's see if I can stop it. Ooh, close enough. I'm not gonna hit play again because I know I'll miss it. So now we're at generation 97, close enough to 100. My average fitness is 93. So I'm definitely seeing a trend with my fitness. It's increasing. I'm the fittest individual. Ooh, 93, 93, 93, 90, oh, 88, 93, 93. Oh, did that one change? Nope, 93. Looks like 93 is my fittest. So I'm going to write that one down. And then I didn't see anything higher. Did you guys see anything higher? I just want to make sure. 93, 93, 93. 93, okay, perfect. And then to my numbers, my red is now at 85. 85. Oh, sorry. My keyboard didn't work for a second. Um, green is still at 255, so no changes with the green part of the phenotype. And um, blue is at 85 also. Okay, so getting closer to our settings. Let's see if that's making our fitness level increase. So now we're going to go to 200. So I'm going to hit play again. Go to 200. Oh, so close. I got to 199. Okay. So at 200, my average fitness has gone up even more. We're at 95%. Okay. And then the fittest individual, let's see what our fittest individual, 92, 93, 93, 93, 97. What? Look at all those 97s. That's pretty cool. Okay. So 97s are highest. What something you should be noticing is the 97% really hard to actually see them on the screen. So let's look for that 97% our numbers 85, 255, and 43. 43. Okay. All right. Good to see. All right. And then let's continue onward and go up to generation 300. So again, play it. Pause it till when you get to 300. Oh, I got 299 again. So close enough for me. So in this situation, our average fitness actually went down a little bit. So now we're at 93. Let's see if we got higher for our fittest individual. 92, 93, 92, 93, 93, 93, 93, 93, 93. Okay, so it looks like 93 is our highest. So our fittest is also 93. And then our numbers are 85, 255, and 93. Okay, so now we've got some data here and here, and now we're gonna actually go through and analyze the data. So I'm gonna kind of minimize my, my lab and pay attention to over here, okay? So over here is asking us about that data that we just collected. So how did the phenotype, the physical appearance, these numbers right here, of the fittest change over time. So we can just look at how it changed over time. From this one right here, it went 255 down to 85. So this one, you could say the R phenotype decreased over time, right? And you can say those numbers, 255 to 85. You can put for the, geno, the G phenotype, it stayed the same the whole time, okay? The G phenotype did not change, green did not change. Um, the B phenotype did also decrease. It didn't decrease as much as the R, but, um, oh, actually it did. It did decrease a little down to the R, but then it went back up. You guys see that? So it decreased and then it went back up. So it's something you can record in your data. So we went from 43 to 93, unless I type in the bottom. Let me double check. Oh, we have to do it here. Oh, I did not, I did not write that down right. See you guys, this is why you gotta check your work. I was like, that doesn't sound right. 
I was like, that is the fitness level. I didn't write down that number. So what was my 93? Blue is at 85. Oh, so I did go back up still. Unless I did that part wrong. Now it's making me wonder if my data is wrong. But I'm just going to keep it as is and we're going to record what we got. How did the population's fitness change over time? Okay, so now we're looking at the average fitness. What do we notice about it? We had our most fit generation was during generation 200. So after we got to the 90s, that was pretty much the highest we could get for these insects. Okay, that's something that you can write down for the fitness change over time. I'm not going to write them out. I want you guys started in your own words. Okay, so this process by which the populations change, this is called evolution. So this is looking at one trait, the body color of these insects, that it can evolve over time. So you can see the evolution over time change, because as we started this, if you guys re recall, we had all of our numbers set up in the birds, or the birds, <laughs> still stuck on the birds, the um, insects looked way different at the beginning, okay? So that was our original um, change. We went from 53% fitness to now these um, insects have become way more fit for their environment over 300 generations. You guys, it took a long time. So one specific insect is not going to evolve. It will not have adaptations that evolve it into a new species or new um, color species. Okay. So it says, based on what you have just seen, how do you think the population will evolve if you made the background color purple? So if you make the background color purple, what do you think is going to happen? Think about what we just collected in your data here. What happened originally? What happened at the end? It took 300 generations for our fitness level to go up 40%. Okay, so make your predictions. And then you're going to go ahead and test it. You don't have to reset because we're looking at the same population. You're just going to change your slider or change your, uh, your phenotype numbers for color. So we're going to now go back to our gizmo. You should already have your prediction. If you need to pause this and make your prediction, do that right now. Set it to 120, your green to zero, and the blue to 160. So again, 120, green should be zero. Oh, that's going to make it interesting. And um, blue is going to be 160. Okay. Um, and then click play and then wait 300 more generations. So wait till you're at generation 600 and then click pause. So we're going to wait 300 more generations. I'm going to make my slider speed a little bit faster so we can see this faster. Four, five, and six. Close enough. 623. So we took 300 more generations. And as you guys can see, holy smokes, things changed. <laughs> Okay, our population of insects used to be, for the most part, all green. Now we've got a couple that are purple, a couple that have a pretty high fitness level. Oof, 98%, that's pretty good. But then we have some blues. We have some blues, and we have some that are still a little bit more red as well. So those are some things to consider when we're looking at this gizmo. Okay, did your, did your prediction, was it correct? Did you say that they were all going to be purple? If you did, you might want to say why it wasn't correct. Okay. Um, and then this is kind of a connection question to get you thinking, why is it necessary to have variation? So why is it important that populations have differences in traits? Okay. Why is that important? Why is that necessary for there or for there to be variation in order for evolution by natural selection to occur? So if every single insect was green and it never changed, would evolution occur? That should be a question you're thinking about when you're answering number five. Okay. And then for number six, um, I want you to reset it, and again, we're going to set red. If this is the same, or it's a little bit different. 120, 0, 160, we're going to go to purple, okay? And then we're going to adjust the mutation rate slider. So here we had a typical rotation rate, mutation rate of 1.0, okay? Now what I want you to do is change that to 0.1. See what happens after 50 generations. Figure out the average fitness, okay? Um, sorry, initial and then 50 generations. What was the average fitness then? And then again, I want you to adjust and go the other direction to seven and see what happens after 50 generations. So then I want you to kind of make some conclusions about the mutation rate. So this is a typical mutation rate of one. So like one mutation every so many generations. Okay, if we're in decreasing or increasing that, that's gonna change how quickly these populations change as well. So it's something I want you guys to look at and make some of your own conclusions with for 60.
All right, that's it for the help video. Hopefully this got you through the lab and you can get it all turned in. Remember it was due on Friday, the uh, 27th of March, but if you didn't finish it in class or you needed some extra help, you can finish that and um, turn it on Monday. We'll also be going through the rest of this on Monday during Class Connect. Good luck.